Eve. Hello, you sexy bunch of sorts, and welcome back to another episode of Bangin' with Chloe Beach. Today is a very special episode, and I mean special because it's the last episode! No, I hear you say. No, it's just the last episode for the season. I'm only pulling the leg. And uh, I've got someone that you have requested on here for a very long time. It's my dad. I came out of his balls, believe it or not. Well, I actually came out of his bell end, but I came from Ooh. his balls. <laughs> my dad, Darren Veesh! <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Are you nervous? Very. Oh, <laughs> he just spent about five minutes cleaning his glasses. I thought he's definitely nervous. I haven't had been nervous shit yet. <laughs> you not? No, I'm going to have one soon. Is it because you've just eaten? Yeah, the after dinner poo. Yeah, I get my bowels from you. Mm. Don't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got IBS and you've got diverticulitis. I have got diverticulitis, yes. Which means we both shit ourselves. Quite a lot. <laughs> Quite a lot. Yeah, in, cust in customers' houses even. <laughs> so basically, right? <laughs> Can I share it? No. Oh, please. Come on then. So basically, right? Do you want to tell it? <laughs> I've t which one? The one about you shitting in the customer's house. I've, and done, mum... it I've done it to a few. Oh, God. About mum having to bring the work trousers to the woman's house. All right, house. so it's diverticulitis. When you've got diverticulitis, um, you don't really get much see it in when you need a shh toilet. It's shit. 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 Fuck. Fuck. Fucking shit. Literally. You, <laughs> you can swear. Right. Good. So you don't really get much notice. You literally just go oh, bad belly. I need a shit. Yeah. And um, I was standing speaking to a customer once. I just put a boiler system in for him, and I'm a plumber by the way, and central heating system. And I'm talking him through the central heating system, and he was like, "Oh, can you fit me a bathroom?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I just felt this little fart, and I thought, oh, "I can just squeeze that," out. and I completely fucking shot myself in the customer's house. The shit is running down my legs. I was like, "Oops!" Ran to his toilet, which is where the boiler was. Don't know why I'm keep mentioning boilers, but there you go. It's a plumbing thing. <laughs> Product placement, heating yeah. plumbers. <laughs> yeah, and then. Um, just the shit had come through my pants and it was all of my legs. And why am I speaking about this? Oh my God, this is going to be on air. <laughs> um, <laughs> we and, can cut it, it's fine. And then um, I wiped myself off in his toilet and I rang mum. I rang mum and I was like, Kyla, I've shit myself in a customer's house. Please bring me some pants round. And she was <laughs> and she was like, okay. And then um, she knocked on the door and I thought she was going to come in and give me the pants. Instead, she knocked on the door and when the customer opened the door, she went, can you pass them to Darren, please? He shot himself. <laughs> <laughs> no! Which was very embarrassing. Did he say anything to you? He said, it's okay, we, we, we've all done it. <laughs> yeah. I think he might, might have just said that to make you feel a little he was bit a nice, He was a nice man, he's called Peter. He's yeah. around the corner from me, lovely man, oh Peter. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. No, I've definitely got my bowels from you. Because when, I, when was I diagnosed with IBS? I think it was a good few years ago. And I remember, like, because it's such a common thing for me, right? I just thought it was normal until I realised I got friends and it wasn't normal. Yeah, but you eat lots of shit. Yeah, I do. I have actually got diverticulitis. Like, I've got to watch fibrous foods. I've got to be careful with peppers. I love food, but a lot of it does not like me. See, I sabotage you, myself. You just eat shit. Yeah. Like, you'll eat three packets of crisps in a McDonald's and then wonder why you've got a bad belly. Yeah. That's the difference. McDonald's breakfast is really bad for me, but I love it. You're a, f you're, you're, you're a fake bad bowel person. I'm not fake. You are? I'm not fake. You are. You put it on because you've eaten too much shit, basically. I've got IBS, Dad. All right. <laughs> I've been diagnosed with it. Okay. I've seen a specialist. I just don't help myself. And I'm allergic to milk, and I? When I was a baby, I used to be sick off mum's milk formula. What, the tea you mean? I don't know, was I? You weren't on it very Did long. Did you ever try mum's breast milk? No. Never? No. Are you lying? No. I it's, would. No, I think I might have had a little off, off the end of a wet nipple before. <laughs> what did it taste like? It's just like, just, it didn't look, really look like milk. It was a bit fucking yellowy, to be honest. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah. See, that's one of the things. I'm really, really looking forward to having a baby. Because I love coffee. So when I make a cup of coffee and I've run out of milk, instead of popping to the shop, do you know what I mean? Just quickly, Dad, do you want a coffee? Auntie Debbie did that. Did she? Yeah. 
Did you? Yeah, to a girl. Uh. Sharanima. Yeah. Shanti. <laughs> <laughs> Shanti, my sister, put tit milk in your coffee. Sorry. <laughs> and did she drink it? Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Oh. That was around Sarah Welfare's house. <laughs> he used to piss in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cross everybody up. Was that one? <laughs> cross everyone up. Fucking cross them all Was up. that one of your ex-girlfriends? Because <coughs> I remember you told me, because dad's got a thing, right? Because you've got ADHD in your dad. Very impulsive. And like, you say it how it is, right? And that's why I love it. Because I've actually, I've got your genes. Unfortunately, you've given me a flat bay. Yeah, well, that's all right. I've got flat bum. Yeah. And I'm not happy about it. But... You drove past, I drove past this woman's house and you went, my ex used to live there. She used to piss in the sink. <laughs> have you had any ex-girlfriends other than that that have pissed in the sink? I've got to be careful what I see. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What are your ex-girlfriends like? No, let's, do we not go there? I don't think Mum's going to appreciate this. <laughs> OK. Has Mum ever pissed in the sink? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. It's about a pissed in a bin. Oh, I've done that plenty of times. Mm. In a sunbed shop. Obviously, before you met Mum, have you always had a pattern with your relationships or have they all just been, like, off the blue? What do you mean? Like, for me, I've got a type. Is Mum your type? Like, have you got a type? Because I feel like because you're, like, proper older, your generation's different. So when you were a kid, did you have mobile phones? No. That's what I'm saying. We had a telephone box. That's mad. At the end of the street and you used to put two pence in it. What? Two pence piece. Big old fuck off two pence piece. Boom. And then, did, that's mad. And then cause... ten pence pieces. Boom. So you used to ring up a bird? Not when I was a kid, no. Oh. No. But like in your teenager's years? Teenage years. Would you still have to go to a, a phone box to put the ten yeah, piece in and then call them? That's mad. Hundred percent. So you had no Instagram? No TikTok. No. We had tin cans of string to the next door neighbour's house. <laughs> bello, 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 bello. <laughs> What's that thing? Smoke signals. Smoke signals. Mm. Oh letters. We had things called letters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like real meal. Oh, and, yeah. And um, we used to write letters. Like pri writeaprisoner.com. Or, or write to your girlfriend.com. Yeah. Um, like little love letters and that and poems. Did you ever do that? And yeah. Put really? Little, and put, you draw little pictures on the envelope and all that. Swock, sealed with a loving kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. See, I'm quite jealous of your generation because this, this generation's fucked. Social media is just like, there's so many options out there. So like, say if I've got a boyfriend, right? And I think you can vouch for this. When I get a boyfriend, I'm very clingy to begin with and then I always think the grass is green on the other side and I kind of switch and change and get in a relationship then I'm like I'm bored now or I think I love them and then I don't that's that reoccurring pattern with me but I think social media's got a part to play in that because I'm always scrolling on Instagram do you know what I mean like looking at different photos of guys and then when they pop up and DM me, I just can't resist. Well, it's too easy now, isn't it? Mm. Like before, there was a phone box and there was meal. And you had to go to that when you were old enough, you'd go to a pub and you'd meet people there. Mm. We used to hang around the streets. We had the town, we had our village centre. It was called The Centre. Are really? You gone, are you going up the centre? No way. Oh, well, let's go up the centre. So, and, we, and we got up there and we'd have a fag. Yeah. E, your mum's coming. E, your mum's coming. <laughs> like, that's how we start, how I started smoking. Really? Some lad said to us, have a puff on that. And I was like... <gasps> And I, was, and I was like, that really hurts. He went, just go like this. <gasps> e, your mum's coming. <laughs> anyway, we shouldn't be speaking about smoking, should we? No, it's a bad thing. <laughs> That's fine. But, um, yeah. So you had to put more effort in to get hold of a girl back in the day because you either had to go out and meet her to see her or to get hold of her, you'd go I've to never a phone really, I've never, really. I've never put... I was going to say I've never put effort into a girl, but that's lying. Like... I've never... I didn't go for... I didn't go for girls. <laughs> what? Who did you go for then, Darren? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, we used to, I, I, I didn't used to go out looking for fuck. Yeah. I used to go out with the lads or with a group of people to have fun. So, um, so I used to just go out and have a laugh. Mm. I used to go out and have a laugh. A laugh. And when you have a laugh, you attract people who want to have a laugh. Mm. So it wasn't a case of like, 
Like the nearest thing I can think of to what you're doing now with Instagram is a fucking catalogue. Yeah. When I was 14 and you had, and like we didn't have porn. You're like, be lucky if your next door neighbor's dad had a fucking dirty video VHS. We didn't have that. We had a fucking catalogue. You'd flick, quick skip through the catalogue and... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> now, you've got catalogues. You've got catalogues online now. It's called Instagram. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. And then you've got people sliding in and out of your DMs. Yeah. What the fuck is all that it about? It fucking happens, Dad. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm talking to... I'm talking to... What do you mean you talk... If you're talking to me, you can't talk to nobody else. I talk to you I fucking want to, you dickhead. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think what does I need, talking mean? Yeah. So basically, you've got the talking stage and then the seeing stage. But I think stage. I am classed as a... Am I, am I a Gen X? What's a Gen I'm X? 1970. Yeah. Like, we're the real people. We are, the, like, the fucking ones. We played with dog shit. Like, I used to use a white bit of dog shit as chalk. Really? 100%. What? He wants to play hopscotch, right? Hopscotch pattern <laughs> on the floor. No chalk, bit of white dog shit. That's there you not... go. You don't even see white dog shit anymore. No, you don't, because people don't pick see it white... up. Do you know what I mean? Right, I'm going to get a petition signed. <laughs> no one picked their dog shit up because we wanted to turn white so people can go back to playing hopscotch with white like, dog, dog shit. shit. Yeah. That's why this generation's fucked. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get it. I and she'll have a phone it. box on the end of the street. Yeah. Yeah, and a garage. There's always a garage or, or there's always a garage or an underpass where when it gets, like, wet, you can... Or if you've got a bird, you can take a bird into there. And have a cheeky finger. A little finger, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So I've got some questions here, right? <gasps> this is quite a nice one. So what is your definition of a perfect father-daughter relationship? In what way? Like, what's just your definition? There's no right a or perfect wrong. perfect daughter. That is for, well, for one, the word perfect is wrong because there's nothing perfect. Your um, ideal. Not even ideal. I think it's just about being open and honest. Mm. I think, um, like, when I was, when you were younger, I was very, very protective of you. Very protective of you. Like, my friends used to say it to me, what are you going to do when she gets a boyfriend? You're going to have to let her go one day. I'm like, fuck off. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I'd literally go and see people's dads. Do you know what I mean? Someone put shit on you once and I went and knocked on their dad's door and went, I'm going to smash your fucking face in. Oh, no, you didn't though, did you? No, I made him okay, apologise to me and then I made his son apologise to you. Um, but you've, you're all right now, though, because, like, when I get that was boyfriends then. and But that stuff, was then, but that was then. So, anyway, that was a bit aggressive, that, wasn't it? Sorry. A little bit, oh. it's all right, though. <laughs> Got me nut, nut head on there. <laughs> but, like... Bye, that, bye, but, but, but that's that, But that's because I'm really protective. But then, as I got older, it started, like... What I had to do, right, is I had to respect you for being you. Because it's so Which easy. Which is a little slag. It's so easy to control. Like, <laughs> we've all got we, we've all got um, ideals of what we want our children to, to be. And they're normally doctors, psychiatrists, dentists. I want them to have a three 2.5 children. I want them to drive a nice car. That's not real. Mm. It is for some people, but it's not real. Do you know what I mean? Um... And it's, for me, it's about learning that every, everybody's an individual and then having respect for that person. Because when you and Harry were younger... My brother. You, you, my youngest, my youngest son, Harry. Um, like, Mum used to literally walk around with a dustpan behind you. She would literally pick up shit from behind you as you were walking around as, as you were kids. And, and, like, that creates, like... I don't know, there's like a lot of fear around your children. Do you know what I mean? You're just like, oh, my children, my children, my children. Well, I ate I dog wanna... shit when I was three, didn't I? Yeah. Proper it. Yeah, in like, Nan's back garden. Full on, crawled in my mm. Nan's back garden, picked up a bit of dog and shit. And sucked on a shit. And sucked on a yeah, shit. you did, yeah. We I had did. to take it off, yeah. Do you, you reckon like... that's probably why I like women? <laughs> women? Women. Oh, women. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you taught me when I was I younger. did not put that shit in your mouth. And I don't mind a bit of ribbon, and I've never ate shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mum actually took me to the hospital, didn't she? After I ate shit. 
I don't know. She took me to the doctors and oh, apparently... Oh, mum's just fucking... You, but you used to bang your foot. You used to, you'd bang your toe and start screaming, I need to go to the hospital. Oh, my God. Yeah, you were proper drama queen. Yeah, I still Spillies. am, though. Yeah. I, still, I love it. You're like... I'm getting used to this now, aren't you? Yeah. You're very, like... Go, I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> I'm feeling myself. Don't see that. <laughs> Do you remember what it looked like when mum gave birth to me and Harry? Did you witness me or Harry coming out of mum's vagina? I witnessed you and not my, not Harry. I was for Harry. I was up north buying a car, um, and mum said it's happening, and I bought the car, which was a sports car. I was like, "Fucking, that's going to get me home quick." <laughs> yeah, because I went up there for some bargains, but instead I bought the fastest car there was. But there was a fucking sensor gone. And I poodled thirty mile an hour. <laughs> All the way down from Newcastle but to... But you see your favourite child ...to birth, anyway. on sea, and I missed my son being born. But for you, when you were born... Um, Did you see me, like, come out I'd actually see you come out, and I thought you were a boy. <laughs> I was like, it's a boy! And they were like, no, it's a girl. I was like, it's a boy! They were like, no, it's a girl. I was like, it's got balls! And the, and the nurse went, that's a piss flaps. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, isn't it? <laughs> They're massive. <laughs> There's no Even way. still. <laughs> <laughs> Guys mistake me yeah, for having cried. balls even now. But I cried. Did you? 100%. What, you so, cried because your daughter has big piss for No, it's just a relief, isn't it? It's a relief that like you were born healthy. Oh. You're getting back to their perfect daughter bit. Yeah. There isn't a perfect daughter. It's about learning to love the person. It's about being able to respect you. I find the most important thing is communication. Yeah. You should be able to tell me anything. I think our There's certain things I do open. not want to hear. Like, like, I do not want to hear how your boyfriend rimmed you or how you'd done this to your boyfriend. Keep that for your friends and your mum. Do you know what I mean? Keep that for your friends and your mum. But, like, stuff like, I'm feeling low, um, I'm happy... <laughs> Um, what do you think of this? Mm. Like communication, very, very, very important. I mean, we talk about everything. 100%. We talk about everything. Absolutely. Even sex. Not Literally. with each other or with anybody else. <laughs> no. Just well, about my boyfriends. Yeah. And occasionally mum. Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <sighs> do you know the common ground between me and you? What? We've both been in mum. <laughs> <laughs> I think I came walking at Mum. Yeah. I think I remember. Yes. Didn't Swing, I? Swinging the umbilical cord. You're like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to be very happy no, when she's. No, I'm is joking, this. Kyla. She's, she's fucking bad influence, Kyla. You need. I used to hear you and Mum have sex all the time when I was young. It made me feel <laughs> sick. I used to be like. Ugh, uh. Anyway, you've never walked in on me and anyone else, have you? No. No. Thank N fuck. No, I think. If I did, they'd have been fucking launched. <laughs> to be honest, when I watched your podcast with Mam and you disclosed that you fucked your first boyfriend on my bed, I was disgusted. I was. I was like the little fucking cunt. And do you know what, as well? Around that same time, a sex toy went missing. So what the fuck was that about? I promise you. It was you. a pink dildo. Where I did it go? I promise you. <laughs> you fucking I, took it, didn't I you, I have cunt? not stolen your dildo. You fucking did. No, you didn't. and your boyfriend pinched my mum, you fucking no, dildo didn't. user, you did. You've, you've accused me of that for years yeah, now. Yeah, because fucking, where else has it got the dildo fairy? I Do you know what not. I mean? Maybe mum was cheating. Mm, right. Ring her and Or maybe you just feel embarrassed that you pinched your mum's dildo. I didn't. <laughs> mm, fucking wrong, Chloe. Dad, I didn't fucking, fucking steal wrong. the dildo. <laughs> You're such a cunt. Oh. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> Go fuck yourself with the fucking new dildo. <sighs> um, talking of having sex and kids and that, <laughs> how the fuck have you got six kids with five different women? <laughs> how did that happen? Did you have, when you were younger, a vision of how many kids you wanted? Because I know I want at least five or six. How did that happen? Yeah. Well, I put my penis in them and they got pregnant. <laughs> Quite obvious, isn't it, really? I was yeah. a bit of a schleg <laughs> when I was younger. Um, Same. But, but to be honest, I wasn't. I was like... All I wanted was to have... Uh, this is the heavy bit. I wanted to have a family. I wanted to, sh I wanted to be Aww. like... I wanted to have kids of my own who I could love. And, and, and when I found David's mum, 
Um, that was it for me. I was like, yeah, we're going to have babies. We're going to have be together forever and all that. And it just didn't work out. I think I get that from you then, because every guy that I get with, I'm like infatuated and I want to have kids with him. Instantly. I didn't want to have kids with her at first. Oh. She just got pregnant. It was oh. just like really, really good sex. Oh. But then she got pregnant and I thought, like being the gentleman, I was like, right, I've made my bed. I will lie in it. I'm not yeah. one of these fucking boys who fuck off. Good. Really. I, I give it, I give it a couple hell. of years then fucked off. No, I didn't. I'm not visualising it. What did it look like when mum gave birth to me? Was she screaming? Because I need advice, dad, right? Mum obviously can't remember Why giving you ask birth mom? to me. Because I've asked her and she went, I didn't make no noise. I just tensed and you fell out. No, not with you. That's but basically with, what she with, said. With Harry, it, but to be honest, she, she, she wasn't that bad. She's quite a, she's quite hardcore, isn't she? Mum's a tough little cookie, yeah. I'm not. No, you're pussy all. I'm, I'm a proper pussy all. Pussy all. <laughs> pussy all. <laughs> <laughs> so where I got that from? No, mum's um, <clears throat> mum's tough. We were actually round our friend Emma's house and um, she went, I think I'm having contractions, starting. I think it's starting. And I went, right, go try and get back to sleep. <laughs> she went, what? I went, try and get back to sleep. She was like, why? I was like, because you've got to be so part dilated before they'll even look at your myth. So, <laughs> look at the myth. So you might as well be in a relaxed place because if not, we're going to have to go to the hospital. You're going to have to sit on a fucking couch. You're going to have to sit wherever. And we're going to be like in a hospital. It's just shit. Get yourself. It was three o'clock in the morning. I was like, can you just fucking go back to sleep, man? <laughs> 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 she was and like, then, and, then, and she did for a little while, and then she was like, "Oh, darn, it's more now. Oh, it's more now. It's more now." And I was like, "Are you sure?" And she was like, "Yeah, it's all the time now." And I was like, "Right, come on then, let's go. Oh, let's, no. let's, let's go to hospital." It was me banging on the womb and the vagina was, wall. Yeah. Let me out! It was, yeah. And, and I could actually see when she was going to. They put a monitor on her, and you could see on this monitor when it started building up when she was going to have a contraction. So no way. Yeah, and, and when she has, when a woman have a little, when a woman has a contraction, it actually hurts them. So, yeah. so I was going, more pain. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah, it's quite funny. What do you think I'll be like when I have kids? I think... Um, Mum said she, just, she doesn't want to be there because I'll break her hand. I don't know, Chloe. I think um, you, you scream if you bang your toe. So, but seeing that, I don't know. It is where it is. All I know is it changes your life. Would you want to be there when I have kids? What? So you're funny. No, oh, thank you. Uh, not stare at my minge dad, no, but like, I don't just even be, be there. No, I don't want to be in the same room. No, that's not for me. That's for your partner. Yeah, but I want mum there. But I'll have mum there, but I will not be there. I'll be the, I'll be the granddad sitting outside the room with a, um, a shake on the hand and a cup of coffee. Okay. I, 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 like, I've been through that shit already. I'm not going through the fucking shit again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Listening to you, I'll be like, I can walk away from that shit now. Do you think you could describe me in three words? The fucking, no, the Chloe Shaw. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Explain. Just, everything's just fucking Chloe. Is it? You come into my house and it's just, you turn my house upside down. Like, you, you cannot be at my house and I'm still getting 30 fucking parcels a day. <laughs> my house looks like a fucking, like a unit, because it's got fucking boxes here from that, that company, this company, that company. And then when you come in, it's um, I love you though. I wouldn't have it any. I wouldn't have you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and then you come in, it's just like I don't know. The Chloe show. The Chloe show, but it's beautiful. Ta -da! It's beautiful because you do actually take over a room when you go in. You, I know. you light the room up. Uh -huh. But sometimes it's just like, well, you shut your fucking mouth. I'm trying to watch the chase. <laughs> I'm Do trying you know to I mean? watch the chase. Do you know what I mean? Will you, you, fuck, will you stop spraying your hairspray everywhere? Turn your fucking hair dryer off. Turn your music off. Do you know what I, mean? I was just, painting my nails just, the other day, weren't I? It gives me massive headache. I'm sorry. No, but you weren't sorry. That's the thing. You did not give a fuck. You thought, fuck you. I'm painting my nails. I'm getting paid for this. Is there anything right now that you want me to apologise to you for or that I've done in the past? No, I'm going to wait for your step fucking. I'm going to wait for your, for your thingy for that. What thingy? Well, for you, I'm going <laughs> to wait. I'm going to wait for your amends. Oh God! I'm basically, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fuck you up with it. <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> so basically, when you're in recovery, you've got to go through the twelve steps. And step four, step five, is when you kind of look at your part and other people's parts in certain situations that have given you the ump, basically. And then when you get to like step eight and nine, you've actually got to consider apologizing to certain people to set your past wrongdoings right. Oh, no, some of my drinking did um, upset my dad a little bit and put him in quite a few uncomfortable situations. Um, 
So I've got to apologise to him for a few things, but I'm just not ready to do it yet because I know that you're waiting for me to go, Dad, I'm going to make my amends to you. What can I do to make it better? And he'll go, I want you cleaning my bed for a fucking week. I want you cleaning my car. I want you to fucking take me to the Canary Islands for six months. Um, and I want you to buy me a dog. I've got a dog. I know you've got a dog. But you'll really take the piss. No, I won't. You've just openly admitted you would. I didn't see you had to do stuff like you that. You said though. you'd fuck me up. Yeah. Because it's not going to be that easy. <laughs> going to make me feel the pain. I actually want you to work on yourself. Oh, the pain mm. in my heart! Mm. What advice would you give to someone that was a virgin in a relationship and his girlfriend wanted to have sex with him, but he was actually scared on how to move forward with it and how to do it? And when is the right time? Because that was the advice section on the last episode. And um, I think you'd be quite a good one to answer that. I think... Um, go for it. <laughs> go for it. Number one, though, be safe. Be safe. Condoms all, all day long. As long as you... I've seen this in the call earlier. As long as you're wearing a condom, fucking fill your boots. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just don't fill your minge. Just don't fill your minge, yeah. Come. Yeah. Yeah, we've come. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Use a condom. Yeah. Use a condom. Fucking be careful what you're doing. And, and and why shouldn't you enjoy sex? But I'll tell you my first sexual experience <laughs> with a girl. Go and on, um, it was a girl, I'm not going to mention her name because she could be married now. Um, it was a long time ago and it was um, in a different place. And um, I didn't even know this was happening. I was like, she was just a friend of mine. As I said, I just had friends. Do you know what I mean? I just thought, yeah. And... And she just um, was in a, ended up at a party at her house and she was like, come with me. She took me upstairs. I'm like, oh, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> and she took me in her bedroom and she took her clothes off and she went, come on then. And I went, oh, and she was like, take your clothes off. And I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> I took my clothes off and she went, come on then. And I lay on top of her and I was like, kissing her. And I was like, frosting <laughs> against her. And I was like, I haven't got a fucking clue what I'm doing. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Just when you lost your virginity? I didn't lose my virginity. That's the thing, right? <laughs> like, like, I thought I'd put my penis inside her. And I was thinking to myself as I was grinding away, I was thinking to myself and kissing her thinking, this is fucking horrible. I don't like this at all. It's not what everyone cracks up to be. It's really uncomfortable. And she went, she looked up and she went, are you going to put it in? And I went, what the fuck? It's in. And she went, no, it's not. She pulled back and I was fucking shagging the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Oh no! Yeah, I was shagging the fucking mattress. Oh! And there you go. Probably saved you one more kid, though. The will is just like. Do you know what I mean? Everything happens for a reason, Dad. <laughs> That's the. But then she was like, I was like, ah, oh, okay. Ah, I there get you it go. now. I get it now. It feels so, so it's all much about. Better. Listen, you're young. You're young once. Fucking enjoy it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What would you do if I? St what would? Right. Just don't, just, be, just don't be abusive to each other. Be nice to each other. What if I said to you right now, I'm starting an OnlyFans, what would you say? I'd say, um, what goes online stays online. Mm -hmm. um, take that into mind. Um, apart from that, as long as you're happy doing it, then crack on. But I want 20%. <laughs> and a car. <laughs> and can I be your manager? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not proofing the photographs. <laughs> <laughs> would you do OnlyFans? Yeah. Would you? 100%. What would you do? Penis stuff. Well, I'd, I'd show my dad bod off first. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> and, my, and my toes. Did you know that no, Kerry, no, Kerry Katona said that you are really good looking? <sighs> Thanks, Kerry. And David Potts said he'd shag you. Thanks, David. <laughs> <laughs> so would you actually start an OnlyFans? <gasps> what type of content would you produce? Well, first of all, I'd have to think exactly what I've just said to you. What's, what goes online stays online. Would I want my grandkids seeing that? Probably not. But probably by the time they get to the age where they can actually afford to pay for OnlyFans, then who gives a fuck? And do you know what? You only live once. So, like, yeah, if somebody wants to look at my body and give me £12 a month for it, then fucking crack on. Would you start with £12 or would you go lower or higher? Would what you, you mean? be? I thought would... it was just a set amount. No, you can set it to however much you want. Six. I ain't got only fans. I don't even look at only fans. You got. You look at only fans, don't you? For research. For yeah, potential research. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I'd fucking. I'm not going to do only fans because my wife wouldn't let me go do only fans. I'll tell you one thing though. Years ago, um, Michaela wasn't happy with the job I was doing because um, I was spending a lot of time away from home, and she went get another job, and I went, 
I found another job and, and I can be home a lot. She went, what is it? I went, I'm going to escort. <laughs> and she went, you fucking what? You're fucking not. I went, it's really good money, Kyla. She was like, you're fucking not. And I was like, I'm only joking. <laughs> what would you rather me do? Escort or work here in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you continued with being a chef? Yeah. Instead of... Yeah. So you, would you be the one receiving or giving? What? <laughs> what are you talking about with men or with women? What are you talking about? The sex. What sex? Escorting. Oh. Oh, that's just a fantasy, that is. But it's not even a fantasy, that's just a fucking bit of a dream. It was a... Oh. Oh. Me and my mate Fuey... Your hit, dream me is my, to be an escort. Me, me, no, me and my mate Fuey, who's dead now, um, he, he, um, when we were up north, we both said, we're going to run away. Like, when we were young, we're going to run away down to London. What what we'll do? We, we male prostitutes would be good at that. <laughs> we didn't mind shagging lasses like. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's every young boy's dream, yeah. though, really, yeah. isn't it? And, yeah. Until we found out that male prostitutes normally have sex with other males. Yeah. And then it was like, Ooh. no thanks. Not for you. Not for me. Different boats for different Well, folks. I know. I know. But it's just not for me. Sorry. <laughs> You'd, yeah, you'd definitely explore. I wouldn't push anything past you, mate. How do you not have an explored? See, my point. That is my point exactly. I've touched a willy. <laughs> Did you like it? It was all right. <laughs> I just don't fancy men. OK. Is there anyone that I've been, like, dating or been in a relationship with that you've loved or that you've, like, no, that's not the one for Chloe? Like, what happens when I bring a guy home and you see him with me, what goes through your head? Is it like, he's not good enough for my daughter because you're protective of the dad? Or is it, hmm, I'm going to suss this one out? Because I get quite nervous about bringing guys back to you because you press their buttons on purpose. Mm. My ex, we went to Nando's and you went upstairs to the toilet together and after you've held your peen and pissed, you went, mm, smell that, and wiped it under his nose <laughs> to push his buttons. <laughs> so what actually goes through your head when you see my boyfriend then? I'm looking for um, genuine people. I'm looking for someone who will be upfront. I'm looking for someone who will look me in the eyes. Mm. Someone with a someone with a hand, with a, who'll, who'll, someone who'll be right honest with us, who'll look me in the eyes and go, yeps. Someone who'll say it to me, don't agree with that. I don't want someone to lick my arse. I definitely don't want someone to lick your arse. People need to have their... They do. <laughs> I definitely want someone to have their own opinion. They love it. Shut up, you can't. <laughs> uh, they've got to have the, they've got to have their own opinion. Um, they've got to they've, they've got to be a grafter. Like I haven't always worked, but you've always been supported. If I've had to, if, if I've had to beg, borrow, or steal, mm -hmm. I have made sure that you have been fed and clothed. Mm. Um, I'm also very morally correct. I know right from wrong, and I expect that from someone who's going to enter into possibly my family. Mm. The most important thing is that you and him get on um, genuinely and that you're not trying to be someone for him and he's not trying to be someone for you mm. because... You pick up on that a lot. Well, it's, it's fucking easy. That's why it's like it's you, you try and pretend to be like... A bad thing can't live in a good place. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you can, pretend, you can pretend to be good, but if you're bad, it's going to come out mm. and I'm going to see it. And I build jigsaws in my head about everybody. I know you do. I'm a jigsaw builder. Yeah. You tell me one thing one month, that sticks in my head until I see you next month and you mention something else and it goes, click that little bit of jigsaw together until I've profiled you. So with my previous exes, what one's been your favourite? None. They're all horrible. I want to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> As a joke. No, none of them. But yeah, no. Which ones have, which ones have I liked? Yeah. Have what? you got a favourite ex of mine? Um, there's been that many, Chloe. Dad! No. <laughs> Um, what, do you want me to mention names? Yeah. Um, Mitchell was all right. Yeah. But he had his, he had his own problems. Yeah. Um, we were just young, weren't we? Yeah. Brad was all right. Brad's my favourite ex. It, Brad was all right. Um, I think you let one, you let that, you fucked that up yourself by yeah. being a bit of a schleg. I did. Um, and, yeah. and, um, what's he called? Um, the fucking 13th stepper. Oi. What do you call it? I can't say that. I can say what I want. No, you can't. It's the fucking Jaron Veach. Or... Oi. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Yeah. The 13th stepper. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> um... 
He was all right. He was all right, yeah. But like, you've got to be honest. Like, I know. We can cut through the we can cut through the bullshit and just like I just want you to like. What do you want in my future relationships? Would you die for your partner? Would you stand in front of a bus? If something was coming at your partner, would you jump in front of it for your partner? Or previously spoken on another episode, would I let them shit in my mouth? I don't know about shitting in the mouth. Um, don't knock it till you try it, Dad. Well, you know I haven't. <laughs> you know your mum's give me pink eye. <laughs> She hasn't really. She hasn't really. No. And she shut on my chest once before by accident. She hasn't really. <laughs> but, but it winds Chloe up. <laughs> I just want someone to look after you. I'm not going to be around forever. I'm going to die one day, and I want to look. I want to make sure that my daughter and her children, that no one's going to fuck about with them, mm. and that you're going to look after them. If I'll you can do, happy. if you can do that, and at the same time be a friend. And give her a bit of when she wants it. Dad! Then, then, then fill your fucking boots, crack on. Just wear condoms. Just, well, if you're going to marry them, I don't mind, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But oh, another thing I wanted to speak about as well, condoms, right? <laughs> Woohoo! Right, like, like people nowadays, they're like, you were sitting to me in the car earlier that, oh yeah, girls, we're not so bothered about them, but boys nowadays, they're pressurising you're not wearing condoms because they say they can't feel it. And that's fucking bullshit. Right. Yeah, because guys For do one, say to me listen, that they can't feel that the is sex. a con That is a control thing and it's an abusive thing. They are being abusers. You, if you do that, you're an abusive cunt, right? It's that easy. You can, you can feel the sensitivity. pussy through a condom, right? You easily yeah. can, right? You can get thin ones. You can even get thicker ones. So if you want to go a little bit longer, that's a, that's a trick of the trade. Wear a thick condom so then it's not as sensitive and you can last longer, right? But... Anyway, putting that to one side, putting that to one side, right? It's also like a relationship, like you get with someone, you use a condom, right? You don't know what each other's are doing. They could be shagging fucking him or everybody, mm. right? We use a condom, use your fucking nut until you start getting into each other, until you start talking to each other, until you say, do you know what? I think I actually like you. Then you're exclusive. And then you, and then you become... As exclusive. exclusive. And then when you become exclusive, yeah, and then after a while, then you make a decision. Right, now you're going to get tested in the GU clinic and I'm going to go and get tested in the GU clinic. We're both going to make sure that none of us have got any sexually transmitted diseases. Right, we've done that. Now let's cross the next step in our relationship. Fuck the rings, right? Just take the take condom. condom off. <laughs> it's massive. It's massive. It is do you know what I mean? You're missing out. You don't realise how much you're missing out on, like, wearing condoms. <laughs> you, you, you're depriving yourself. You're depriving yourself. Of that next exciting step. Of that next step. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I get ya. I do get ya. Instead, you're just like, yeah, fucking what? He said he's not going to fucking be very happy if I... Like, the bloke's a cunt if he's seeing that. Mm. All he's doing is he's like, yeah, fucking went round there. Fuck, I didn't even use a condom, dirty cunt. Then I stuck it in my mouth. Oh, it's all, It is, it's all, it's all lad stuff. <laughs> all lads, right? All lads. All they want to do, most of them, is get into your fucking niggas. Yeah. And they will tell you anything. They will tell you that they love you. They will tell you you're the prettiest girl they've ever seen in the world. They will tell you, tell you they want to marry you. They will tell you anything to get into your Alan fucking wickers. And then once they're in there, <coughs> see you later. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Respect yourself, Claw. Yeah, I do now. Respect yourself. I do. Do you know what I mean? I do, yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm going to be... Says me, the schleg has got six kids. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, but you've learned from your mistakes. I've completed it, mate. <laughs> you... I've fucking completed the game. You... I'm, I'm at peace. I'm happy. If I die tomorrow, I'd have made it. I've got everything I wanted. I can put my head on the pillar and I can sleep. That's very important for me. Mm. I've got people around us who I love and who care about us. Mm. I've got people around us who I love and who I care about. Money means fuck all. Obviously, standards of living, yes, but do you know what? I love you. Yeah. Do you know? Say it back then. What, I love you too? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. I love you all the time, unconditionally. Thanks. So, you've never told me this story, right? How did you propose to mum? Because this might give someone that's watching out of the banging community inspiration. No, I didn't actually tell you what, right? This was, so I'd been through relationships and they all went pear-shaped. 
a lot of that was to do with me. I'm taking half the responsibility. I'm not taking all of it, but I'm taking half of it, yeah. Very I've, much. I've cleaned my side of the road, mm -hmm. right? Um, the last relationship I was in, before I met Mam, the woman fucked off and left me with the baby, right? Um, so I was a one-parent family, and I really hated women. I told myself, women, this is this was my catchphrase, women, I have shit them, right? But I was still a kind of good-looking bloke at the time. And funnily enough, when you're walking around with a pram with a baby, you get loads of muff, <laughs> right? And the muff was chucking itself at us, so I had muff every day. And what I would do is I'd see her right, come around at a certain time, and I'd be washing my dishes. And then as they come round, I'd see them washing the dishes. They'd see me washing the dishes and they'd say, oh, don't do that, I'll do it for you. And I'd be like, thanks. <laughs> but what they would do is they would come in, they would fuck me and then they would fuck off. Uh -huh. um, which was what I wanted. Oh, it can it. happen both sides. It's not just 100%. men using women. No. Women use men. hundred percent. I've had fucking nutters at my door. You fucking said you were going to fuck me tonight and you've got her and you know she can't. Do you know what I mean? She's like, whoa, fucking slow down. Um, so anyway, how did you propose to mum? Anyway, so <laughs> what it was is, this is the fucked up bit, right? M my wife. My mum. Your mum, right? Oh, God. Her uncle was engaged to my sister at the time, uh -huh. yeah? Um, so so looking after my son, Jake, and um, my sister would come and visit me in my flat and she'd come round with Kyla once. My mum, yeah. Which is my wife now. And um, me and Kyla got talking and, um, and then she'd come round and she was like, she was the first girl who actually asked me, how are you? Which it wasn't just about sex. It wasn't just about, do you want to kind of be a, uh, can you get on that? I'll do your fucking dishes for you, but like, thank you very much. Do you know what I mean? It was like, she was like, actually like, how are you? How are you doing? Because mum said she didn't fancy you when she first met you. No, because I was fucking really boisterous. I was like loud, in your face. That was a mask. Mm. I used to do it to everyone. It's just like, yeah, nothing hurts me. I'm fucking invincible. But really, I was dying inside. Mm. Really. But anyway, um, so yeah, mum was the first person to... Um, Ask me how I felt. Um, so you just I, popped the question? No, 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 no. I just started seeing her. Well, I didn't start seeing her. I thought, I, I like you. And then and then my sister said to her, she went, you know, whenever you come around my house, Darren. And I was like, yeah. She goes, Kyla smells your jumpers after you've left. And I'm ah. like, what? I was like, I was like, does she like us? And she was like, yeah, she fucking likes you. And then like, and like we started flirting a bit more and all that. And then... And then I thought, right, I'm going to make the step. And I went and knocked on granddad's door. Yeah. And I he called Jake, he was. And I was like, and he come to the door, you big Scottish man, fucking lunatic. He went, hey, what you fucking want? Like, hey, he, 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 he was an axe, you bastard. Rrr. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I was like, um, can I take your daughter out, please? And he said no and slammed and the went, door. And he went, no, you can't. And slammed the door. Yeah. But after you beat it around that bush and mum's bush, so what I did is I just thought I'm doing it. I've, I've come and knocked on your door. I've asked for permission. You've said no. I've tried. Fuck you. I'm taking her out. I like her. She likes me. And We're everyone, a happy family. And, and, and everyone in the area was like, do not go with her. Her dad's a fucking nutter. And I was like, I can give a fuck about her dad. I, I like, I love her. I yeah. love, I love Michaela. And, um, and then I moved to the Lake District where I was working up there and, um, I thought we were going to split up, to be honest. I was fucked up. I was fucked up on drink then. I moved away and um, to try and straighten myself out and it didn't work. Um, and um, But mum come and see us in the Lake Districts and we had, it was the summertime, um, it was during the day, we were in my room and we just had sex and she was sitting on top of me and your mum used to have these fucking beautiful, muscly thighs. Used to. Right? What are you trying to say? Well, she's still got the thighs. They're just not as muscly as they were. And um, her body was perfect. And she was sitting on top of me. And I just looked at her straight in the face. And I went, you are fucking beautiful. This sex is great. If I'm still with you in a year's time, we're fucking getting married. Wow. In a year to that date, she went, come on then. And I went, what? She went, you said. <laughs> No! And I was like, what? I didn't mean it. She was like, I've told me dad and everything. I was like, fucking hell, shotguns and all that. No. But, um, but no, I loved her by then, 100%. How yeah. long after that did you get married? 
after what? After that first year that had gone by, when she said, come on then, let's get married. How long was it after that that you got married? Um, a year of saving up for the, for the wedding. So after two years of meeting mum and we, being with mum, yes. you got married? Yes. Wow, and how old were you? 21. Wow. Something like that. That's two years younger than me. No, I might have been older than that. No, I think I was older than that. I can't remember. That's insane. I can't remember how old I was. I think I was older than that. So what would your advice be to anyone out there that is newly married or that is married that's listening to the podcast? How do you, yourself, yeah. stay in your marriage and keep it the, the, stable? One of, one of the biggest things I've found out, right, is that people... You take them for granted. Do not take people for granted because I'll tell you one thing, you're going to take someone for granted and they're going to die. And I've learned that lesson and it is fucking horrible. So every time you're with someone who, you're lo who you love, when you leave them, you tell them you love them. Mm. When you're with that person and you love that person, tell them you love them. And one of the biggest things you can do, and this is one of the things what made me and mum so close together, right, is that I had something I did not want to tell anybody because I thought if I told someone, I would get, like... Judged? Very much so. Very much so. And, and, I, thought that, and I thought I'd be... I thought they would use it against me mm -hmm. to hurt me, and I'd kept that quiet for a long, long time. And, um, and I... But it, it was eating me up. And, and, and I eventually told mum, and it was the best thing I ever did, because it, cause it just like... You're as sick as your secrets, aren't you? It just like, it just took a massive weight off my shoulder that, that, I'd, that I'd shared something, and mum just did not. Um, it she made still a, loved you. It made us stronger. Well, I hadn't done anything wrong, mm. but it was just something... That had happened. That had happened in the past, do you, do you know what I mean? And it was, and... Um, it's okay for men, and I think you're an example of that from what you've just said. Like, it's okay for men to open up and be vulnerable. If it's listen, o it's okay for men to not be okay all the time. This this is not a this is not a rehearsal. This is life. Like, use it. Time's the most valuable thing you've got because it does not last. Fuck the money. Time's ticking all the time. Mm. Right. So why wait? Why spend years? Pretending one of the I spent years with this mask up. Do you know don't you know who I am? Keep the fuck away from me. I'll rip your fucking head off. That was my mask. Do you know what I mean? To keep like men away from us, like people who, who wanted to hurt me away from us, things mm. like that. Um or or I was or, <laughs> drop the drop the mask. Mm. Drop the mask and um Be you. Be vulnerable. Mm. Be be vulnerable and um See, the thing is, I think I'm, I'm at a stage, like, because I was vulnerable with mum and she didn't abuse that, that really brought us together. Mm. Um, and me and mum are just a team. We are a team. Where I'm weak, mum's strong. Where mum's strong, I'm weak. But it doesn't matter what we go through, we stick together. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Family is everything. Family is everything. And but it doesn't mean that you've got to let family walk on you, Chloe. I if know. you've got a parent or a brother or a mother or a sister who does nothing but put you down, fucking back off. Yeah, I'm Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Hundred percent. And like bonded your family, and, isn't and it? like loyalty. People think people think because they're family, you've got to be loyal to them. If someone's being abusive to you, listen, fuck off. Mm. Right? You've got to think of yourself. If you if you can't keep yourself straight. You can't help nobody else. Mm. Um, we just talk a lot in our family. We we are just very open in our family, and mm -hmm. um, and no matter what arguments we have, um, you just pull your dick out and whack it, whack it around, and it's all right. And it again. normally is because I whack my dick around, and I feel she she, she, she gets the ump <laughs> yeah. when, I, when I do it seventeen times a day. Yeah. Or when she bends over to pick the washing up, and I go, <laughs> jump, "You fuck off." That's where I get it from, mm. Dad. Thanks. Oh, I've learned so much about you and you're my dad and it's literally been an episode and we've... Thank you for coming on. I know that you were really nervous just before you come on, but I could tell that you started to ease out. Do you reckon this life's for you, dear? I think I'm going to have OnlyFans and the fucking Geordie Darren pod within fucking six months. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. If anyone wants to get in touch um, for any advice, please contact the Banging with Chloe V pod on Instagram and a uh, round of applause for my dad, everyone. Oh, my God! Jordy D, Jordy D, Jordy D! I love you. Thank you. Love I you will see you 
in the new year for season two of Banging with Chloe Veach. So it's goodbye for now, my lovelies. I love you millions and you will see me a lot sooner than you think. Mwah! Banging with Chloe Veach is part of the Eve Podcast Network and a Forever Dog production. Executive producer, Tracy Soren. Development executive, Mariah Nicholas. Senior producer, Paloma Kaufman. Producer, Ewan Newbigging Lister. Post producer and theme song, Brian Hevron Smith. Cover photo by Greg Bailey. Forever Dog Productions is Joe Cilio, Alex Ramsey, and Brett Boehm. 